A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Who's there? A friend. All's well. <laughs> I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yes, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business. If you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. That shall be cancelled. <laughs> Go bid thy mistress when my drink is ready. She strike upon the bell, get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle towards my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have me not, and yet I see thee still. And on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. Thou marshalest me the way I had I was going. In such an instrument I was to use. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. How sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps which may they walk for fear. Thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. While I threat, he lives. I go, and it is done, the bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Make them drunk hath made them bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. I have drunk their possets. The death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Who's there? What ho? Alack, I am afraid they have awaked. And tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark, I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. My husband. I have done the deed. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more, Macbeth, thus murder sleep. Still is cried, Sleep no more, to all the house. Glameth hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Why, worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and near the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not. Give me the daggers. I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? Will all great Neptune's oceans wash this blood clean from my hand? My hands are of your color, yet I'm ashamed to wear a heart so white. Mm. I hear a knocking at the south entry, retiring to our chamber. A little water clears the stuff his deed. To know my deed, to best not know myself. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, bold. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. I'll bring you to him. This is the door. I'll make Sibold's call, which is my limited service. Goes the king hence today? 
was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. A oh, horror, horror, horror! Time to horror cannot conceive nor name thee. What's, What's the matter? matter? Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. What is, did you say? The life? Me and his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Oh wait! Oh wait! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Malcolm, awake! Look on death itself! Up, up, and see this horror! Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak, speak! Oh, gentle lady, our royal master is murdered. Whoa, alas! What, in our house? I have died an hour before this chance! I have lived a blessed time! For from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality! What is amiss? Your royal father is murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chambers, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were embadged with blood. So were the daggers which unwiped we found. Upon their pillows they stared, distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. <laughs> Yet I do not repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love did outrun the pauser. Reason? Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature. For ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade. Their daggers unmannerly, breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and the courage that makes love known? Oh, yes, huh? Look to the lady. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall. Well contended. I shall not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. This murderous shaft thus shot hath not yet lighted, and my safest way is to avoid the aim. Let me not be dainty and leave taken. Three score and ten I can remember well in the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. This sore night hath trifled former knowings. Ah, oh, good father, thou seest the heavens has troubled with man's act, threatened his bloody stage, that darkness does the face of earth entomb, when living light should kiss it. Tis unnatural. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They are suborned. Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. It is most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Scone to be invested. Will you to Scone? No, cousin. I'll to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's venison go with you and with those I would make good of bad and friends of foes.